What's up everyone and welcome to a new My Guitar video, the video series where I go through my stash of guitars and tell you the individual guitar story, stuff like that. And then I do a setup right here and then I play them. It seems like you guys enjoy these type of videos, so I'm just going to continue on making them. In the My Guitar video before this, I took out my S7G Solar, the Strictly 7 Solar, the first signature model I had. I was on a two-year contract with Strictly 7 and uh, before that ended, I actually had talks with several brands, one of them being Ibanez and one of them being ESP. Being with Strictly 7, it made me realize that, you know, even though, I mean, Ibanez and ESP are both really big, awesome brands, having an endorsement with Ibanez back when I was a teenager, that would have been the dream. But, you know, since I already started to design my own guitars, you know, draw them out, you know, I had some sort of vision of where I wanted to go. I knew that going with Ibanez or ESP, I wouldn't be able to bring in my own shape of guitar. I would probably need to do like a re revised RG with Ibanez, for instance, or something like that. So even though I had meetings with both ESP and Ibanez, I also had a meeting with Washburn. And Washburn were kind of like, you know, underdog in that sense. But, you know, being an avid Dimebag fan, you know, Nuno Betancourt and all that, you know, Washburn, I keep them in a really, really high regard. So I had meetings with Ibanez, ESP and Washburn, and I ended up with Washburn. Washburn were kind of like the underdog back then, you know, they just started the Parallax series, but they were mainly doing acoustic guitars and, you know, the the Dimebag days and, you know, the Glory days were over. So they were sort of like an underdog and I sort of, sort of liked that. And uh, they were really open to uh, bringing in my shape as well. So I had a lot more leverage to actually create the perfect guitar, basically. So I showed them my guitar shape. They said, yes, we can do this. And we started building this. Now, this is the absolute first guitar ever with my design shape on it. It's a USA custom shop Washburn. And uh, at that time, Chewy and the guys, you know, who work with Dimebag back in the day in the custom shop, they were working the shop still. And they made this guitar for me. And it's, it's a piece of work. I mean, look at this. It's like pearl white. Don't know if you can see that, but the finish is basically pearl white. Uh, ebony fretboard. Uh, you have the locking tuners there. Every tune bridge. This particular one now has Fishman pickups in it, but it initially had Seymour Duncan pickups in it. And then I changed it out because I was changing pickups and all of that. Oh, and if you look at the back, I remember this. The shape of the neck is slight V-shaped, just like Dimebag's guitar. So just a slight little V-shape like this, where you have a little nudge here. And also, I don't know if you can see, but look at that. It says Vinter on there. And you can see the Feared logo here. I just released the Feared album Vinter, and we brought this out. There's a sound in there. Oh, you know what? It's probably the battery for the active Fishman pickup. I've been using this guitar for a lot of live shows. I mean, this was the main guitar I had when I was playing with the Haunted and starting touring with them. It's been through a lot. I mean, as you can see here, it's been fixed. This little uh, part right here has come off probably when it was shipped somewhere. I just glued it on. But other than that, for being a guitar that I've been touring, it's in pretty good condition, I must say. There's a bunch of... I mean, there's a small little thing there. But that's it. And this is also before uh, we designed a more seamless, you know, uh, heel back here. This is a set neck right there. And this is basically a piece of history of what would later become Solar Guitars. I brought my designs into Washburn Guitars and then I brought them out to create my own company. And this is the first time someone ever built my design. And today I'm going to do a setup of this guitar. I'm going to change some strengths and I'm also going to fix an issue that I have with this. So I've also used this in a fair amount of videos and I also made one video where I had very, very thick strings. I have actually filed down the nut here way too much. So, uh, I mean, that I probably need to change the nut or, you know, fix the slot with some uh, epoxy or whatever. But today I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm just going to do a temporary solution so I can play it today. But right, so right now, as you can hear, it's bussing pretty hard because, you know, the string is just going way too far down into the nut slot right here. So I'm going to try and fix that today. Uh, I'm not sure how. I need something to kind of shim 
you know, in the slot right here. I remember a, a tip that I got from a guitar tech, Alan, who is an amazing guy. He told me that you can get like a small little metal plate and just fold it, put it in there and uh, it would work pretty well as a temporary solution. So I think I just have to find something that will work for, for doing that. But as of right now, where the fuck are all my, oh, there it is, my string wonders. I don't need. Yeah, man, this brings back a lot of memories. I mean, when was this? Back 2011, I think, you know, they, ah! <laughs> you know when the string goes right into your finger? It just happened guys. Yeah, I remember this because, you know, when I was with Strictly 7, uh, I was playing with Six Feet Under and, you know, I toured a full year. I had a two-year contract and as the two-year contract was about to uh, end, you know, I started looking for other deals because uh, obviously, you know, I wanted to do so much more with my guitar designs and in Strictly 7, you know, I just used their pre-designed Cobra or whatever it was called and I still wanted to make more. I mean, I, I wanted to make my shape that I've had and uh, Washburn were really open of doing this. You know, I really gelled well with the Washburn guys when I had a meeting with them. So that's obviously also very important uh, regarding endorsements and the people you work with. You want to work with the best people. And uh, I really gelled with the guys at Washburn. And even so well that one of the guys, Greg, later uh, quit Washburn. And you know, that was like when I was just about to end uh, my deal with Washburn as well. And I was like, okay, you know, I contacted him and asked him if he wanted to be a part of uh, creating solar guitars. So Greg and I are still working together. He's an excellent human being and uh, one of the few people that I, you know, can re work really, really close with. You know, a lot of people figure the endorsement deals and, you know, it's all about the guitars. Well, it's not always about the guitars. It's also very, very important which people you're working with, you know, what type of people you're working with. The guitars are just guitars. I think if you find people that you can trust and people that you work really well with, that's more important than anything. And we also have Xavier, it was the other guy that I had a meeting with. And uh, he's also working for Solar Guitars now, so that's great. I just got this from a random dude at NAMM. He's like, hey man, I saw that you used my stuff. Here's a free bottle. I haven't used his stuff, but <laughs> okay. Thank you, I guess. Let's just do it on this. I'm just going to do a little bit because, you know, this is obviously a satin finish and you shouldn't use uh, polish on satin finishes but this uh, this body is so dirty i need to uh, you know wipe it off of there's actually i think there's some blood on here from a live gig sometimes you pick so hard you get bloody that's just the way it is obviously i was very fortunate to be working with not only greg and Xavier, but also you know these guys at the, at the custom shop in the us and guys like chewy who you know he made the finishes for Dimebags, Washburns back in the, you know, all the custom shop finishes. And, you know, those guys, very happy to have been able to work with them. Chewy has done a fair bit of my other Washburn guitars that I'm going to do another video as well. And uh, his, uh, he, he's amazing. A good friend. And obviously he was a really good friend with Dimebag as well. So uh, if you're seeing this, Chewy, you're awesome. New for this time is that I actually bought a fret conditioning kit uh, from Dunlop, I guess. Guitar fingerboard kit, what's this? Deep conditioner, wow. Cleaner and prep, okay, let's start with the cleaner and prep then. So finally I can clean some fretboards. Can you, can you see, fingerboard 01, okay. Comes with a package that looks like this. I just bought it because I have no idea what to do with my life. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do it like this, but that's uh, me being an amateur right there. All about this guitar is just, it's just so well made. That Washburn Custom Shop back then, God damn, man, it was one of the best in the world. And uh, I feel very, very proud to have and own a fair bit of, you know, guitars from that custom shop. And actually a couple of them being under my own name and my own design. So uh, that makes me extremely proud, actually. It's really weird because at the same time, I was also, you know, endorsed with Randall and had my own signature amplifier with Randall. So basically coming full circle you know, basically, you know, Dimebag having Washburn and Randall. But that was just a coincidence. Me being such a fan and just ending up there. That's so weird how, you know, fate kind of works. If you believe in that bullshit. It's okay to believe in that. It's okay. I can trust you guys. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. That's why I do this. Also because it's fun. I think it's fun to do this. This is like therapy for me. So now I've applied this little cleaning thing for a while. 
that looks like a pretty clean ass fretboard right there. Let me let me show it to you. That looks cleaned, okay? And here you can see the ebony not being entirely black. It's very uncommon nowadays that you can find completely black ebony. When you find it, it's very, very expensive. Back in the day, people were used to having black fretboards, but nowadays, you know, it's a piece of wood. You will have streaks on it. Someone's calling. I can't... I can't pick up the phone right now. I'm actually making a video, okay? It's actually Greg that I was talking about. He's calling me. He's calling me every day. We talk every day. But just not right now. I'm filming, Greg, okay? Take it easy. So let's use this. What's this? The deep conditioner. Just like, you know, when you wash your hair. Oh, it's one of those. Look. Looky. Look at my look face right there. It's one of those. So you... It has to get wet. Yes? Are you coming, you little baby? Oh, you need to press a little. It's just like those pens. There you go. Look at that. <coughs> hell? Look at that. Holy shit face. Okay, let's just do a little here and there. Facey face, facey face, facey face, face. <coughs> my little face tonight, yeah. So originally this guitar came with Seymour Duncan pickups. I think it was a Duncan Distortion and a 59 in the neck position. And you know, then I've used a fair bit of different pickups on here. Then I switched it to these. I think I did a, a video for these. So I made a video of these. Uh, I think it's Fishman Fluence Classic. And it just fits really well with the, you know, the, uh, the chrome hardware. It looks kind of good, but it's, it looks still really good with the white pickups in there. Soak it in, baby. Now that is a fretboard that has been taken care of by Ola the Swede. Okay, let's get rid of that. I'm trying to clean here. Sorry, clean. You know, let's just uh, do what I usually do. 10 to 52 GHS. It's just because I have so many. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I'm just using the strings that I have. So the problem I have now, I don't know how you, how you can see it, but basically this slot right here goes way too deep. So I have to fix that. Maybe I can use this. You know, I have these that I have for sale. <laughs> the, uh, the pick tins that I have for sale on my website that contains uh, guitar picks. Maybe I can use a piece of metal from this lid to use as a shin in the nut there. So this is going to be interesting. I've never done this before, but we're going to do it together, okay? Come on, cut you little piece of shit. I have to be careful not to cut myself with this. This is dangerous stuff. Only for professionals called Ole England. This is just a temporary solution. I probably need to take this to a tech to fix this nut slot. But I'm just doing it now so I can play guitar later. Okay, look at that. There you go. That's a small little shim for you right there. That's so small. That's what she said. <laughs> so something like that is in my dreams what I imagined this to be. <laughs> I guess I have to just put it there and then I put the string inside as well to keep it done. And this is probably the absolute worst way you can do this. Okay, so right now it's in there and I'm gonna put the string right on top of it and hopefully that will fix the problem temporarily so I can play this guitar and have a good time because that's the point of my video right here. Okay, so right now I'm putting this string in the shim right there this is going to be... Oh, that's... Yeah, that's exactly what I thought would happen. It just pulls with the string. Okay, so let's... Look at that. I'm stretching the string as much as I can. Well, not as much as I can, but a lot. I'm stretching the string a lot. There it is. Sounds great. This is going to be the best sounding D string you've heard in your life. This is very delicate work. And guitar techs all over the world would be like, Oh, what a <coughs> noob this guy is. And I know. I know, guys. I'm sorry. I am a fucking noob, but I just want to make this video happen and then I can take it to a tech. Look, look at that. Now it's actually in zone 2 on the Evertune. Is that a D? Suck my little D. No, no, that's a C right there. Is that a C? C. And the shim is on there. I can't actually hear any uh, fret problems now. Nah. Probably because of my geniusness. <laughs> all of being stupid in the face. Yes. So obviously, throughout all these years, string face. What's your string face? You know, when you get the string in your eye. How does your string face look like? I'm going to show you mine. It's this. There you go. One last string. 
And then we fade away One last stray If I wasn't such an incredible guitar tech I would probably have become a professional singer Just sing Okay? That standard D would have dropped C It's funny how that ever tune works You just set up the strings Put it into zone 2 and it's basically in tune The only thing that can actually change the tuning If you're using the same string You know, the bridge will keep the tension of the strings But the only thing that would probably affect the tuning Is if the actual string changes weight So if you sweat a lot and put a lot of, a lot of skin on your strings Then maybe if they're really 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 old They won't be the exact same tuning anymore but that's what Cosmos, the inventor, told me. What? I just had a guitar pick and now it's gone. Oh, there it is. Dude, that neck feels great. Even the neck is pretty <coughs> good, I must say You know, normally I would do a truss job adjustment But I think right now all I need is a little bit of a height adjustment, actually So I'm gonna pull this string down a little bit I'm just checking so there are no, no fret sounds Okay, how were the... Okay, let me see Okay, I think we're good Dude, that looks <clears throat> perfect Oh my god, this is gonna be amazing Let's just go and play this thing These Fishman pickups sounds really, really good So, they're not the Fluence Modern pickups, these are the classic ones They're not as aggressive sounding as the Modern And I think I kinda, and I think I kinda preferred the classics over the Modern, to be honest But you still have the splittable options, you know, you can You know, you can split, you can change the mode of the guitar by doing this little push-pull right here It goes uh, between like an Alnico and a Ceramic Type of pickup configuration. It's really weird to have this V-shaped neck going on. I, I haven't played that in a while, so it's, uh, it's a little weird. It has a little bit of that metallic Probably need to dampen this a little bit, let me put one of these on As I'm sitting here uh, playing, I reminded myself that I was using this guitar all over the Haunted album Exit Wounds when I recorded everything All the rhythm guitars, all the solos, I was using this exact guitar And uh, I just reminded myself about that I remember that this guitar uh, it, it just inspired me so much when I received it I mean back then, this was all I was playing Before I had our guitars I was playing this day in and day out basically So I was just so in love with this guitar I mean, it also feels a little bit different playing the Fishman pickups And you know Sitting with a guitar like this, and it's not Duncan Solar pickup. These are a little bit more hot. The pickups just sound really, really uh, metallic for some reason.
switch to the other mode here. I think I like this mode the most where I have it pulled out like this. I think that's the only cool mode. So there it is. It's that little asshole for you. And uh, obviously this guitar holds a very very special place in my heart. And you know, thinking back, this was like 9 years ago. 9 or 8 years ago this was made. I've been on an incredible journey since then. I mean that was about when, you know, my YouTube channel really started to grow. You know, I was joining bands, I was joining Six Feet Under and you know, I joined The Haunted. You know, I started with Randall, I started with Washburn. I mean a lot of things happened during that year, 2012, I also quit my day job everything was kind of like coming together at this point and you know, this guitar was sort of like a stepping stone to these coming years that have just been like absolutely amazing this guitar is definitely a milestone because it's also the absolute start of you know, my journey with solar guitars you know, and my brand and you know, doing my own shit taking my design to do something for myself it's something I'm really really proud about and I'm also very thankful for Washburn for letting them do my guitar in the first place and you know they were a very big part of me growing around that era so yeah, kudos to those man and uh, this is not the only Washburn solar guitar I'm gonna show in my my guitar videos I have a couple of extra really really cool ones that I want to show you uh, sometime soon hope you enjoyed this video and guys, thank you so much for just being awesome with me. If you like this video, please consider subscribing maybe and uh, put a thumbs up and I'll be happy. Okay, take care guys.